He edited and uploaded the footage as a threesome plot a few days later in a vlog called She Should Not Have Played With Fire. Now what's f***ed up about this title is David is acting as though he didn't want her doing it. He would have advised not to do it. As you're gonna read further, that's not exactly it. Hi, my name's Anthony Resinello. I'm a social and relationship coach living in Los Angeles, and today we are going to walk through the David Dobrik allegations and use that as a way to talk about consent. So one of the big reasons why I wanna make this video is because boys aren't taught consent at an institution or usually even by their parents from a very young age. Fortunately, my dad did teach me about consent and also he's a lawyer. So he was able to teach it to me from a place of morality and from a place of law. Now that being said, I'm not here to teach you about consent from a law standpoint, but I wanna teach you consent from a moral standpoint. Yes, I do believe that men should already know about consent before starting dating. But the sad truth is, even though there are tons of resources all over the place, a lot of boys and men just aren't taught it in the right way. You know, for instance, when I was young, what did I think consent meant? It meant yes. If a girl said yeah, that's consent. But the truth is, that is not what consent is. Consent is not yes. Because a yes does not mean always yes. A yes is not always an absolute yes. It's more complex than that. And so first what I'd like to do is I'd like to walk through the Business Insider article about David Dobrik and Dirty Dom and the rest of the vlog squad. Okay, the title is, a woman featured on YouTube star David Dobrik's channel says she was raped by a vlog squad member in 2018, the night they filmed a video about group sex. Somebody said that this is a clickbait title. I don't see any clickbait about this. It's not, woohoo! Rape, 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 everyone rapes in the vlog squad. No, it's very plain and rational statement about something that actually happened. A group of seven college students were on their way to meet David Dobrik, but Hannah didn't know who he was. The friends piled into one of their cars to go shoot a video with Dobrik's YouTube famous posse, the vlog squad. Hannah knew her friends watched videos made by the group, yet had no idea how famous they really were. At the time, November 2018, Dobrik was about to surpass 10 million YouTube subscribers and was well on his way to becoming one of the platform's biggest stars. David and the vlog squad are known for their fast-paced comedy videos that have been described as half scripted. The content feels like a mix of reality TV, improv, and situational comedy. By March 2020, he'd be named Gen Z's Jimmy Fallon by the Wall Street Journal, living in a 9.5 million mansion, yada yada yada. He's rich, he's famous. Uh, now something I want to point out here, they describe it as half scripted. And if you've seen any of the Vlog Squad members talking about situations like these, they like to turn it into something that is a bit. This is a comedy skit that we're filming and everyone is in on the skit. Now, victims that have talked about what happened in the vlog squad claim that these things are not skits. There may be concepts of we're gonna film this and we're just gonna see what happens and we're gonna pour gasoline onto the fire and see what happens and try to push it forward. But that's not a bit that's not a script. That's not a, a skit. <laughs> Earlier that day, some of the students had begun chatting over Instagram with a vlog squad member who went by the name Dirty Dom. Dom, whose real name is Dominicus Zaglide, I'll just call him Dom, said he wanted to hook up with them according to the direct message transcripts reviewed by Insider and some of Hannah's friends were interested. That night, Hannah would become ensnared within the no holds barred, clicks and cash fueled lifestyle that the vlog squad members celebrated in their videos really well said. Now I want to be clear here. According to the message transcripts reviewed by Insider and some of Hannah's friends, Dom wanted to hook up with these women and some of the girls were interested. Now here we go again. I want to talk about what I mentioned at the beginning. Yes, maybe I'm interested does not mean consent. The students who had watched Dobrik's videos knew Dom played a character in the vlogs who was a sex addict. They didn't know where the character started and ended and weren't sure whether they were actually supposed to be having sex with him that night. Agreed. The sexy stuff won't be in the vlog, right? They asked over direct messages on Instagram. So even if they wanted to hook up, it doesn't mean 
all of them wanted to hook up. It didn't mean that all of them wanted to hook up when the time came, they could have changed their mind, right? Might need to take a pic just to show Dave so he believes me, haha. -ha. Dom, age 23 at the time, replied, presumably referring to Dobrik. So already what Dom is doing is he's trying to change what's going on. So they just said, it's not gonna be in the vlog. Dom goes, well, I might have to show Dave. So already he's trying to get them to agree to something small. Later on, he'll get them to agree to something slightly bigger, slightly bigger. Hannah, a 20 year old sophomore at a private liberal arts school in Los Angeles at the time, didn't know what to expect, but she was up for an adventure. She said she couldn't have predicted what would happen that evening and that the events have left her with trauma. In phone interviews with Insider, Hannah accused Dom of rape by engaging in sexual activity with her that night while she was so incapacitated by alcohol that she could not consent. She says members of the vlog squad supplied alcohol to her and friends who were too young to buy it themselves. So let's first talk about the inability to consent while you are under the influence of alcohol. Now, not a lot of people are clear about this stuff, right? So. If somebody is under the influence of a drug, that means that they are not able with a clear mind to say whether or not they truly want to go ahead and do something. So it's so important for you to know what this means. If I ask somebody to do something with me and they're on drugs and they say yes, do I go, that person really, 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 truly wants to do this. Does that sound right to you? Number two, these women were not even of age to drink yet, but we're gonna get further into all the drinking and who bought and why people are, were buying alcohol. Dobrik filmed Hannah at the apartment as she entered Dom's bedroom with him. He edited and uploaded the footage as a threesome plot a few days later in a vlog called She Should Not Have Played With Fire. Now what's fucked up about this title is David is acting as though he didn't want her doing it. He would have advised not to do it. As you're gonna read further, that's not exactly it. Before it was deleted at Hannah's request, it was viewed five million times. Hannah spoke with Insider on the condition of anonymity out of concern that sharing her full name could affect employment opportunities. In this story, her name and those of her friends who went with her to Dom's apartment are not their real names, but pseudonyms chosen by Insider. In late February, when Insider first reached out to Dom about Hannah's story, he said he didn't want to talk about the vlog squad, but speak to his own achievements. Reached again in early March about the allegations, he declined to comment. Insider also reached out to Dobrik's management and each member of the vlog squad who appeared in the scenes featuring Hannah, Jason Nash, Jeff Wittick, Todd Smith, Nick and Tanyan, and Brandon Calvillo. Only Wittick responded. The same attorney, Brian Friedman, released an additional statement to Insider that said David will be addressing his community directly. The statement went on to say, anyone who knows him knows he does not condone misconduct in any form. Vlog, blah, 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 this is all lawyer talk. Hannah said she quickly felt uncomfortable with the vlog squad members. The video filmed the night that Hannah says she was assaulted follows a classic David Dobrik vlog format. It's four minutes and 20 seconds long and includes a celebrity cameo and comedy scenes featuring Dobrik's friends. Dom appears is two minutes and 13 seconds in. According to a copy of the video reviewed by Insider, I invited these girls over to have a fivesome, he says, implying that he'll have sex with four women at once. So hopefully I'll have a fivesome tonight. The next shot, is of Hannah and her friends walking into the apartment on Hollywood and Highland where Dobrik, Dom, and other vlog squad members are gathered. First of all, if somebody wants to engage in a lifestyle where they're having group sex and everybody is consenting and they're adults, Fine, fine with me, fine with the world. Now, engaging in deviant sexual practices like group sex, you have to realize that instantly, consent becomes so much more complex. Why? Because there are more people involved. That means there's more peer pressure involved. And that means that instead of just consulting with one person about how they feel about engaging in sexual activity with you, you now have to consult with four people or just more than one person. It becomes a lot more complicated. And that's why if people want to engage in group sex, there are actual communities for that where people are all experienced in it, they know what they're doing, they've done it before, they are part of that lifestyle. Just trying randomly to hook up, have sex with a bunch of people at once 
it starts getting tricky because you don't know how everybody feels. You don't have a relationship with those people, right? And if you just try to hook up with somebody after an hour, that's complicated as it is, but for different people at the same time, it gets very, very complicated. Now, the next fucked up part of this situation is David Dobrik's plan was to capture Dom, a sex addict, bringing over four women, and then as quickly as possible, having group sex with them. Now think about it. How often do you find anybody having sex with four women at once? Four people at once, anybody at once. Why do you think Dom would have that ability? Think about it. Why would Dom, does he have magical powers? Is he some cool pickup artist with all the tricks? What? makes you think that that would be possible. What made David think that that would be possible? I'll let you think about that one a little bit. As soon as she walked in the door, Hannah said someone shoved a camera in her face. She has one line of dialogue in the video and she and her friend sit down on the couch. Hannah has heard saying she doesn't actually know who anyone in the vlog squad is. I immediately felt really uncomfortable because I was under the impression that we were gonna go meet these cool creators. We were gonna hang out, maybe film something. Hannah told Insider, it was high pressure from the moment we walked in. Hannah and her friend Sarah, who drove everyone to the apartment, told Insider that they never intended to have group sex with Dom that night, a hesitance reflected in the vlog. In his voiceover, Dobrik says, after a couple minutes of talking, it was clear there was no five-some happening. But, Dobrik added, by some stroke of luck and master negotiating, Dom made progress. Now tell me this, when you think about having sex with somebody, does the word negotiate ever, ever come into play? Does that word negotiate ever pop into your brain when you think about having sex with somebody? Have you ever negotiated having sex? It's actually like such a weird word to use. David was seeing sex as a sale. Usually the word negotiate is used when talking about some sort of business transaction. David already saw this as a transaction. There was no emotion involved in this. Even if you are having sex with somebody that you just met that night, it still should not be a negotiation. It still should involve emotion, chemistry, and attraction between each other. Now the word attraction to me is very specific. It does not mean that you see somebody and you go, oh, that person is a good looking person. I would like to have sex with them to validate my ego and so other people see how cool I am. That is not attraction. Attraction is actually a feeling of mutual chemistry by two people where they both feel this intense excitement for each other. Dom obviously felt no attraction to these women. So then what was the reason why Dom wanted to have sex with all of them? What is the reason why Dom put out something that said, I want to have sex with four people on his Instagram or whatever the hell he put out? Really the reason is, is because there's some insecurity inside of him that said, I need to do this to win the validation of my friends and the public and myself and maybe the friends who bullied me when I was a kid because I looked weird, maybe the girl that dumped me when I was younger. In essence, what Dom wanted, which is what many people that are young or just immature sexually want, they want to use somebody's body as a means to making themselves feel more valuable about themselves. That's different than attraction. That's, I don't know, ego, that's insecurity, really. David knew that about Dom. David knew that he wanted Dom to objectify these women. In other words, see these women as merely a means of making himself look cool in David's eyes. Already from this perspective, whether consent is there or not, I don't recommend having sex that way. First of all, I've been in that place before. It results in just feeling empty and needing more of it in hopes that it will 
gain more validation in me. Hannah told Insider that she felt pressured by Dom and the other Vlog Squad members into helping them create content that objectified her. There we go. She said Dom took turns interacting with Hannah and her friends and that he pulled her onto his lap at one point without asking for permission. It was very much an environment where it felt like saying no was not okay, Hannah said. It felt like from the moment we came there, it was an expectation that they were doing us a favor and we had to give them content. They were verbally like, why aren't you guys being fun? Do something sort of sexy. The pressure doesn't only come from the vlog squad and this is what complicates group dynamics. Hannah also probably felt pressure from her friends. Not that her friends did anything wrong, but internally she's going, well, they value these guys. So her perceived value of those people also goes up at the same time, raising the peer pressure. Hannah said Dom started calling her baby and asking if she wanted to be his Instagram girlfriend. She said Dom told her she could make $10,000 a week and become famous if she agreed, but Hannah says she declined in Zaglatus briefly seemed to move on from her. As the night went on, Hannah says Dom became aggressive. A while later, Hannah said Dom approached her again and asked if he could talk to her. She agreed and said Dom led her out of the room. Her friends were in down a hallway and into a pitch black bedroom. Hannah says Dom guided her in through the door and she said she quickly turned around and told him that she wanted to go back to where her friends are, but Dom blocked the exit with his body, Hannah said, and started asking her why she didn't like him and wouldn't date him. Hannah said, Dom asked if they could hook up. She replied, no, she told Insider. By the way, fucking worst, <laughs> least charming person in the world, by the way. Why don't you like me? Can we hook up? Why aren't you, why won't you date me? Like, where's the chemistry? Where's the connection? Where's the attraction? Where's the like-minded interests? Where's the similar sense of humor between each other? None of that is there. It's just assertiveness. It's just pushing himself. It's just pressuring. That's all he does. Somebody with no social skills or individuality or personality or charm has to resort to these low life approaches, which is likely why he feels the need to objectify women because he needs to validate his insecurities. Do you know anybody like this? Have you felt like this in the past? He was like, no, you have to at least give me a kiss, Hannah said. I was getting really scared because he wasn't letting me leave. My friends were in a totally different part of the house. I was like, what happens if I keep saying no? So I just gave him a kiss. She returned to where her friends were sitting, she said, and around that time, she said a couple of the members of Vlog Squad returned with a bottle of dark colored liquor. Trisha Paytas, a former Vlog Squad member, told an insider she was at the apartment for about 45 minutes that night with Hannah and her friends. Paytas said the night was not a good situation. She said she left because the women were drinking while underage, which felt insane to her. Paytas also said the women made it clear they did not want to have group sex with Dom. They were like, oh shit, we're here, but we don't want to have sex, Paytas said. Paytas told Insider that Vlog Squad member Jeff Wittick went to go buy liquor for the party after she told Nash, her boyfriend at the time, not to. Paytas said she and Nash left before Wittick got back. Paytas and Nash are no longer dating, and she has frequently criticized Dobrik and Nash on social media, including for what she claims is a pattern and a behavior that exploits young women. She also made a TikTok saying that she once crashed her car. Okay. Hannah's friend Sarah, who said she didn't drink that night because she was driving, told Insider she remembers Todd Smith asking the group what kind of alcohol people wanted. Sarah also said she remembers Smith and Wittick coming back to the apartment with Smith holding a bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey. Sarah shared a photo with Insider of Dom sitting with Hannah and her friends alongside a bottle of Jack Daniels and a two liter bottle of Pepsi. Okay, what do we know so far? Women came to hang out with the vlog squad. They were asked to have group sex. They didn't even know if they were taking it seriously. They saw a celebrity was asking people to come hang out. When the vlog squad saw that these women did not want to have sex with Dirty Dom. They decided that alcohol was the answer. And let's be clear, the entire reason they were at the apartment that night, they were all gathered around, is for these women to have sex with Dom. That wasn't a side thing. They weren't like, hey, let's all crowd around with the lights on because again, those lights were blasting like they usually are in the vlog and let's play Scrabble together. And meanwhile, Dom might wanna have some friends over and maybe we'll film something, but who knows? No, the fucking point of the video was to try to get these women to have sex with Dom, right? 
So the next step was, let's get alcohol for them. So at that exact moment, they were saying, let's try to have these women not be able to consent to sex with Dom. Just saying that fucking like, fucking makes me shiver. In a phone call with Insider, Wittick denied buying the alcohol and said he didn't think Smith would have bought it either, though he said Smith loves whiskey. At this point, I can't really remember much, Hannah said. I just remember being really uncomfortable and being honestly really upset and angry that my friends thought that these guys were really cool and they're really just objectifying and gross. Hannah's friend says Dom had sex with her while she was blacked out. Hannah said she drank so much alcohol the night she filmed with a vlog squad that she blacked out. Sarah told Insider that Hannah wanted to go to Dom's room with Dom and their friend Audrey. Although Sarah said she could tell that Hannah was drunk, she was comfortable with letting her go into the room because Hannah wouldn't be alone with Dom. Why did Hannah drink so much? Hmm, maybe it's because she was not mature enough to put alcohol into her system. They also knew that. They knew that these women were not experienced with drinking, so if they did drink, they might drink more than they were supposed to. Let's put it this way. Do you know any 30, 40, 50 year olds that are getting blackout drunk on the weekend? It's just not in the culture for an adult, an experienced adult to drink that much. They knew somebody that is inexperienced with drinking is more likely to get to the point that they are not able to consent at all, beyond consent to the point where they are blacked out. I just remember seeing her and Dom talking a lot, added Sarah, who said Hannah and Dom were both drinking. They were both on the floor and definitely a lot of alcohol was being exchanged and kind of like nudged toward her. There were definitely times she was drinking it of her own volition, but there were also times where he was clearly trying to get her to drink more. Sarah said Hannah was able to walk into the room, but that she could tell Hannah was drunk because she started excessively talking and expressed abstract thoughts, things that Sarah said Hannah usually did when she was drunk. That's what most people do when they're drunk. She was not fully coherent and articulate. Sarah said you could tell she was definitely affected by something It was very obvious in the way she was speaking, which was very fast and a lot. Once Hannah and Audrey were in the room with Dom, Sarah said the other members of the vlog squad started trying to listen in. Some of them even opened the door to look at what was happening, Sarah said. In retrospect, Sarah thought it was disgusting that people were watching. Obviously, she didn't consent to the act itself, but she especially did not consent to to having multiple men peek their heads in to confirm what was happening, Sarah said. I mean, that is literally like 14 year old stuff. Like if two people are kissing in the closet and freaking 14 year olds are peeking in. These are people in their mid to late 20s. Sarah said that Dom locked the door to the bedroom at one point while I was having sex to stop the other vlog squad members from coming in. Sarah said Dobrik was among the vlog squad members trying to look into the room. She shared a video of Dobrik she took that night with Insider in which Dobrik can be seen responding to someone asking if he's found success in getting into the room with Dom. No, he locked the door. Dobrik responds in the video camera in hand. Sarah said that Dom and Audrey came out of the room first and that Sarah went in after him to find Hannah lying limp on the bed. Sarah said she was immediately concerned and that she remembered Hannah tugging on her ear and asking where her earring was. Hannah said she does not remember having sex with Dom and that Audrey told her Dom performed sexual acts on her that were penetrative. Specifically, Hannah said Audrey told her that Dom was having sex with Hannah and didn't stop as Hannah showed signs of losing consciousness. So Audrey took over to get Dom to stop. Now think about it. Somebody is basically blackout drunk while having sex with you. Do you really think that means that person really wants to have sex with you? And what kind of person are you that you are only trying to hook up with people that are not able to even realize if they wanna have sex with you or not? Does that sound exciting to you? Does that sound like something that makes you feel good? Going, hmm, I only wanna have sex with people and I try to have sex with people in a way where they don't have to decide if they wanna have sex with me. How cool is that also, by the way? Think about it. How cool are you that you are trying to have sex with somebody that isn't even able to decide if they want to have sex with you? Does that feel cool to you? No, I don't wanna talk about this in a preachy way. I wanna talk about this genuinely. I want you to think about that. Like, do you get excited about that? Doesn't it sound so much more exciting? Like, isn't consent so obvious in that when you have sex with somebody, you do it 
because that person is like, holy crap, I wanna have sex with this person so bad. I feel this, I feel such a strong emotion towards them. And I feel that we really trust each other. I feel that we really connect with each other. I want to have sex with this person so bad. Like, don't you think that is more exciting? Wouldn't you only want to have sex like that? Wouldn't that be the only way to have sex where everything else felt like, why? Why would I want that? That's the way I want you to think about consent. Apart from the fact that consent is also about another human making their own decision about something, completely, completely distinct from your own decision. After Dom finished, Hannah said she was too drunk to dress herself. What I do remember is lying on the bed in that room alone and my roommate at the time coming in and being super worried and putting my underwear on me because I couldn't do that by myself, Hannah said. Sarah said she and Hannah's roommate took her into Dom's bathroom where Hannah couldn't stand or sit up on the toilet by herself. Sarah said Hannah fell over and passed out on the bathroom floor briefly and when Hannah's friends pulled her back up, Sarah said they had to pull trig slang for forcing someone to vomit. The California Penal Code says that rape is an act of sexual intercourse accomplished with a person not the spouse of the perpetrator where a person is prevented from resisting by any intoxicating or anesthetic substance or any controlled substance and this condition was known or reasonably should have been known by the accused. It's weird that it says with a person not the spouse of the perpetrator. Hannah never contacted the police and no charges have ever been filed against Dom. Now let's take this last part of the definition and talk about it. And this condition was known or reasonably should have been known by the accused. Okay, so what if you say, I didn't know the person was drunk? Well, let's think about it. Is it in the middle of the day? Is the person acting completely normal, completely clear headed? Not at all unusual. Have you met this person before? Does it line up with how they usually act? If this is the first time you're meeting them, how do they act in comparison to other people you might have had sex with that have consented before? How does this compare to any normal person that you've met before? Or is the situation that maybe you're at a bar or you're at a party where everyone is drinking, or maybe some people are drinking, or maybe there is even just alcohol in the room. What situation makes it reasonable for you to know that this person is under the influence? Even if in your mind, there's a slight chance that this person could be under the influence of something, that means that they don't give consent. But Anthony, what if I'm at a party and blah, blah, blah? No, I always want you to bring it back to the idea that if somebody is gonna have sex with you, you know 100% absolutely that they are so excited to have sex with you and there is not one doubt in their mind that this is what they wanna do. That's the only time you should ever, ever have sex. If there is the slightest doubt that you go, ah, this person might change their mind, this person really might not want to have sex with me, Maybe 99%, but a little bit of them doesn't. Maybe a, a little bit of them might have been alcohol. A little bit of it might be peer pressure by me or by friends. Even though this person is so excited about doing it now, I just have this weird feeling that maybe they won't be excited about it after it's done. If you have that thought, even the slightest chance of that, don't do it. That's not consent. If you think for a second that from the beginning of time to the end of time that this person did not want to have sex with you at that moment, then do not do it. Now, this should not just be for the mere fact that you are respecting another person's decision, but it should also be for the fact that you only want to have sex with somebody because they truly, truly want it. After Hannah threw up, Sarah and her friends had to physically support Hannah's body as they exited the apartment. Sarah shared a photo with Insider, she says, was taken that night that shows Hannah leaning against one of their other friends outside the apartment. Dobrik, Antonian, Smith, and Wittick are visible in the picture. Sarah says she watched Dobrik's Tesla pull out of the apartment building as she walked with Hannah 
back to her parked car. Sarah said Hannah started vomiting again back at their dorm. When she finally got Hannah into her bed, Sarah said she just started asking questions about what had just happened. Dread started to seep in, Sarah said, when Hannah didn't seem to remember leaving campus at all. The next morning, Hannah said she woke up and still felt extremely drunk. When she looked at her phone, she saw a text conversation with Dom and photos from the night before. She texted him that anything at your discretion is okay for the vlog, just maybe not anything that a future employer could use against me. Anything at your discretion. So I wonder if Dom thought that maybe a future employer wouldn't care that he saw a drunk Hannah going into a room with a guy named fucking Dirty Dom to have group sex with her. Was that something that a future employer ah, might look down upon? Hannah said she still had no memory of having sex the night before. Then her friends woke up and Sarah said she told Hannah for a second time that Dom had sex with her. That's when I started internally freaking out because it's concerning enough that the first time she didn't remember it, the second time was really scary, Sarah said. When she finally started to process the scope of what had been told had happened, Hannah said she tried to laugh it off. For two days, Dobrik didn't post any footage of her or their night at the apartment, and Hannah said she tried not to think about it. Then on November 28th, the vlog came out. Hannah said she struggled to process the footage in Dobrik's vlog. In the vlog that featured Hannah, the bit about the threesome includes scenes that Sarah said were shot that night, as well as a scene Sarah said was reshot but made to look like it occurred that night. In the scene shot as the sex was occurring, Dobrik and Vlog Squad members Smith, Wittick, and Tanya, Ernst, and Calvillo joke about Dom having sex with Hannah and Audrey. In one scene, Wittick is standing in the hallway outside Dom's room and says, we just need to get in there to get a head count for the vlog. Wittick opens the door and tells Dobrik there are three people in the room. Then Antonia opens the door and says, oh my God, while Dobrik laughs. Smith says, I'm kind of getting horny just like listening to this. And the four men laugh. In the next scene, Dom is standing in his room drenched in sweat. Sarah said she did not believe this scene was shot while she and Hannah were at the apartment and that Dom wasn't actually dripping sweat that night. Dom said thanks David and gives him a high five after Dobrik asks if it was his first threesome. Then Dom asks Ernst to smell his finger and Ernst says the finger smells like Brandon's sister. At the end of the vlog, Dobrik films himself Smith Calvillo in the car. Sarah said this appeared to have been filmed the same night since the men are wearing the same clothes and had left the building in the same Tesla. In the scene, Dobrik says Dom just had a threesome and I think we're all before Smith interrupts him to say going to jail. Dobrik laughs and says, I think we're all going to jail. Calvillo says, see you in 20 years. In a podcast interview with Travis Mills recorded the day the vlog with Hannah was posted, Dobrik recalled Dom inviting the women over for a staged fivesome. When they all got there, they were like, oh no, I don't wanna have sex, I don't wanna have sex. Dobrik told Mills, except two of the girls wanted to have sex, so he ended up having a threesome, which was still his first threesome, and it was very exciting for him. Mills asked if the other vlog squad members peeked into the room to confirm Dom was having sex with two women as they were depicted in the vlog, and Dobrik said, yeah, well, you know, he didn't have sex with them unless we saw it with our own eyes. Dobrik went on to say that he was always pretty good at asking his friends for permission to put their clickbait worthy moments in the vlog. There is no sex shown in the vlog, but Hannah told Insider that ended up being portrayed in the video about her was totally misconstrued since it doesn't show the extent of her intoxication. It seems like I had a super fun night with these famous vloggers basically, which is not what happened. She said, every single person that I know is messaging me, you were in David Dobrik's vlog, that's so cool, or oh my God, I saw the vlog you were in. On the day the vlog was released, it was viewed more than 800,000 times. People came up to Hannah in the library and in line at the coffee shop to talk about it. She said, Hannah said, her little sister even texted her about overhearing people at Hannah's old high school talking about the vlog in the bathroom. It made Hannah feel so alone, she said. It's difficult to describe how it feels knowing that millions of strangers have seen a video of me in a night that affected me and traumatized me in nearly incomprehensible ways, not knowing that anything was wrong. The first time Hannah said she described what happened that night as rape, she said she was in the back of a cab in her hometown after a night of drinking with a friend. It was over winter break, a month after she filmed with the vlog squad. The next morning, Hannah said her friend asked her if she remembered that she had a panic attack in the car and said, I was raped over and over again on the way home. I don't want that to be my identity. It's not my identity. I could comfortably say I was the victim of rape, but I don't identify as a victim. Hannah said, that's just something that happened to me. And so that's why I didn't speak to anyone about it for a long time. After she processed the events of the night with the vlog squad, Hannah said she did research about the legal system in California and decided it wouldn't be worth pursuing a case because she was so intoxicated at the time, but she still wanted to do something. On February 2nd, 2019, Paytas uploaded a since deleted video accusing Dobrik of being an actual horror 
horrible person who she said, along with Nash, exploited young women in the vlogs. Hannah watched the video and said it made her wonder if other women also felt objectified while filming with the vlog squad. Three months later, after she last texted Dom, Hannah decided to reach back out. Even after the vlog was gone, Hannah still struggled to find closure. Shortly before midnight on a Monday in February in 2019, Hannah sent Dom a long text message. It's incredibly disturbing to me to have a video online that documents an entire night that I have no recollection of and have everyone around me view that as a reflection of my character, especially considering the mature content. Looking back on the experience, I feel taken advantage of. I did not want to participate in sexual contact with any of the men in the room. She also wrote just over an hour later, Dom wrote back, okay, I respect your wishes. The video's down. Neither Dom nor anyone else in the vlog squad ever said anything to Hannah again. This is a pretty long text. I read it already. It's pretty involved. You could tell that she was pretty traumatic about what happened. And it's so interesting that the only thing that Dom could say is, okay, I respect your wishes, the video's down. If in any universe I was in that situation and somebody texted that to me, do you know how fucking horrible I would feel? All I would wanna do is let that person know how sorry I was, but it, such a cold text, which to me says that, again, this was just a transaction for Dom. This was an ego transaction for Dom. It took me two weeks to muster up the courage to essentially reach out to him and tell him how I perceived and felt about the situation. Hannah said, it's not a place for me to say whether or not he should say sorry and I don't expect that from him, but to not even have these things that were obviously deeply vulnerable for me to say acknowledged whatsoever was quite frankly mean. Now, this is a big thing. The idea of sex being a transaction of ego validation. When I was young, in my teens, that's how sex was for me too. I thought, wow, this is a new thing. This is something that like cool adults do. I wanna be known as doing it too. I want other people to know that I have sex. And so along with attraction and all that stuff, it was also a transaction for me. But as I got older, more experienced, and understood what sex really means. I stopped giving a shit about what other people thought about me and my relationship with having sex and my relationship with women. I realized at the end of the day, I'm not getting anything cool from people thinking I'm cool. That does nothing for me. It doesn't give me any good feeling. It doesn't give me any value. And then I realized what is the only value I get from sex? Hmm. The real value I get from sex is the connection I have with the other person. That amazing feeling of chemistry you have with somebody when you're staring at them and they're staring back at you. You guys are having an amazing interaction. You guys are laughing together, connecting on so many things and feeling that closeness, feeling that trust. That is why sex is good. So I don't care about what people think about me having sex with other people. It brings me no, it, it does nothing for me. Literally does nothing for me. You know, I thought, oh, it makes me look like the man. I'm fucking cool. Okay, well, even if you do feel that after a night and friends are like, yeah, bro, good Johnny, good job. Then what happens? You do it again and then they, and then, I mean like, what are you getting? <laughs> what do you get? I wanna know what you get from looking like the man. The truth is you don't get anything. It's just another empty path, another empty journey to take that doesn't really bring anything. But what really does bring something? Relationships, relationships with people that are meaningful, that are exciting, that are fun, right? That's the only reason I wanna have sex is because I feel so strongly about another person and I know that other person feels so strongly about me. Now again, I don't wanna seem preachy here. You don't have to wait months before you have sex with somebody. If you meet somebody and on the first night you feel that and you know without a doubt absolutely that that other person is just excited about you as, as you are to them, then have sex that night. If you guys feel that energy that excitement, the only tricky part is having sex on the first night, you're not exactly sure if that person always is gonna feel so, so excited and won't regret it in the future and maybe might feel a little pressure to do it that first night. Having sex on the first night might be fine, but 
you're taking a risk there. You're taking a risk and not being sure if that person actually really does want to do it. Does that feel good to know that somebody might be doing something with you that they might not really want to do? Again, I'm making this video because I know that yes, there's resources out there about consent, but I don't believe there's a lot of places where men can actually get excited about learning consent from somebody. And hopefully you could use this video as a way to remember that consent is something that should excite you. It's like, whoa, this girl really wants to have sex with me. This man really wants to have sex with me. That should be something exciting for you. And the idea that somebody might not, even 99% does and 1% doesn't, that should be like, ugh. Why would I wanna be with somebody that isn't sure? That's not fun for me. Like I wanna be, I wanna do this because I feel so good about this person and that person feels so good about me. That's why I wanna do it. So if they're drinking and they're drunk, you should go in your mind, yeah, but like what if tomorrow they were like, ugh. <laughs> Does that feel good to you? And you may go, yeah, but my boys will know it's good. Uh, yeah, oh, pff, okay. Pff. Why is that cool, dude? What are you getting? Hannah said she was glad the vlog was off Dobrik's channel, but that she still deals with the psychological effects of the night to this day. When she drinks, she said she still experiences panic attacks sometimes. If she's having sex with a new partner after drinking, she said she sometimes starts crying uncontrollably. I have nightmares where I'm raped. And when I'm not dreaming, I can't recall what Dom's voice sounds like or what any of their voices sound like. But when I have these dreams, I hear his voice. Oh. Like, just think about that. Would you ever wanna live in a world where somebody feels like that about you? That just feels like the worst, worst thought to me. And I would never want anyone to have a life where they had to experience those emotions and had dreams like that, right? Oh, that's why consent is not just important to me because I respect other people, but because consent's exciting to me. I don't want anyone to have any chance of ever regretting anything with me. In fact, the exact opposite. If somebody has sex with you, you want those people to always remember you <laughs> and go, yeah, I had sex with Ashley, I had sex with Johnny, and that was the best sex ever. They were amazing, we had the best connection. That's the way you want every single person that you have had sex with to feel for the rest of their lives never change their mind, right? That sounds a lot more cool than your boys just thinking you're dope for like pushing yourself onto somebody and using their body as a transaction of ego validation for yourself. Like, whoa, life is dope living like that, dudes. If you ever, 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 have the slightest doubt in your mind that this person might regret having sex with you, that this person might feel pressured into having sex with you, that this that one percent of this person might not really want to have sex with you, then do not do it. Wait until maybe they truly do want to have sex with you where you know 100% that they won't regret it. What if you go, Anthony, how am I gonna, how am I gonna know Trust me, you will know if somebody's consenting. They should be enthusiastic. They should be so excited about it. If they feel shy about it, if they feel hesitant about it, just don't do it, right? There's other people you could find that are excited about it. Now, there's a lot about this story that I didn't mention, but that's because I wanted to use this story only as a way to teach about consent. If you wanna read more about this story, then please support the journalist that wrote this, the link is in the description. If you're interested in learning about social skills, relationships, charm, dating, uh, from a non-toxic perspective, but at the same time, very effective perspective in terms of starting great relationships with other people, then you could subscribe to my channel. I put out videos three to four to five times a week. Hopefully you watched this video today and learned something or got excited about the idea of consent. If there's somebody you know that you think might benefit from watching this video, please share it with them. 